So what are the differences between the new M1 MacBook and the old Intel MacBook, both from 2020? <laughs> You're going to be pretty surprised. All right, so what we're going to do in this video, and, and you can stay tuned because these are pretty shocking results. I'm going to compare the, uh, this is going to be basically the mid-2020 MacBook Pro with Intel right here. And I'm going to compare this benchmark-wise to the new 13-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. I guess they call that the late 2020 MacBook Pro model, which is the new one. And then this one over here is the mid one. So long story short, one's got Intel, one's got the new M1 chip, and it's going to be shocking what the differences are. As far as the differences, as far as the case and stuff, they look exactly the same. There's one key difference. I mean, when I say key difference, I mean on a key. It's basically going to be a key has a little like a globe on it. I'll show you some stuff here. And uh, that globe basically takes you to some emojis. So it's a very, very small change. They both have the touch bar. They both have all that info, you know, all the same stuff there. They both have two ports on them. The newer version of it, the M1 has support for Thunderbolt 4. Uh, I'm sorry, for USB um, 4, but they both have, you know, Thunderbolt, two Thunderbolt ports. So that's not different. The screens are the same. They're both the same brightness. Um, the weights and dimensions and stuff like that are, are just exactly the same, basically. So that's no difference. But behind it or underneath the hood, there's huge differences. And that's what we're going to get into in this video. I'm going to go through a bunch of tests, show you what the differences are, just so you can see, should you wait or should you get the old one maybe for a deal or should you wait on the new one, see if the bugs get worked out. What should you do? Let's go. All right, so let's take a look at the actual SSD speed tests and megabytes per second. The blue is the new M1 uh, MacBook Pro, and the green lines are the Intel-based 2020 MacBook Pro 13-inch. They both have 8 gigs of RAM, like I said. So on the right, so let's go ahead and take a look at, at the right. So on the right, the actual M1 is 2360, 2360 megabytes per second. And uh, if you look at the Intel-based one, it's only 1180, so it kills it there. On the reads for the M1, it's 2697. And uh, for the Intel base, it's 1780 megabytes per second. So you can see the big differences here in the hard disks, and, and they're really, really quite a big difference. All right, and the next test is Geekbench 5. So if we take a look at the single core scores, the new Intel M1 gets 1724 versus only 919 for the Intel-based. And then dual or multi-core for the M1 is 7529 versus only 3952 for the Intel. So again, you can see the big differences here, and this is Geekbench 5. All right, and the next test is going to be Cinebench R23. And again, the blue is the M1, the green is the Intel-based. So for single core on Cinebench 23, the uh, M1 gets 1698, and uh, the Intel-based one only gets 1150. On multi-core, it's pretty crazy. The M1 gets 7738 is the score, and uh, the Intel only gets 4210. So you can see it's a pretty big difference here. And uh, we've touched on this before, but I just wanted to show you the difference between just the same year, the early 2020, and this late 2020 MacBook Pro. And then one thing to note also is on the Cinebench 23, we were looking at the watts when we were actually doing the test as well. And uh, it's pretty amazing. The M1 only was using around 14 watts, somewhere in that range. And uh, the Intel MacBook based, the, the, you know, the mid-2020, it had to pull 41 watts or somewhere around that. So the, the power is like three to four times as much also, which is going to come out to a lot of battery life. All right, so this is the metal benchmark, and this is going to be kind of a graphics performance benchmark that is pretty good. So, you know, this is pretty common. Everyone should know what this is. This is a huge difference here. So if you look at this one, the new MacBook, the new M1 MacBook Pro has 21,850, and the old Intel-based, you know, mid-2000 uh, MacBook with Intel, 7,075, so about three times the amount on metal. All right, let's take a look at the GFX benchmark. This is more of a gaming benchmark. It gives you kind of a universal frames per second. It runs some tests on it. Just gives you kind of a relative number, but let's take a look at this. The new Intel, you know, I'm sorry, the new M1 MacBook Pro, it gets 77 frames per second as its average, 77 frames per second. And the old Intel based mid-2020 with the Intel chip, 22 frames per second. Again, you can see that the M1 is just blowing this away, even on gaming. 
All right, so the next one is gonna be Final Cut Pro. This is the Bruce X benchmark. And just to put this into perspective, it's really just gonna be for Final Cut Pro. It's telling you how fast it can render something. It's all kind of relative. It just shows you in relation to some other system. So in blue here is the new M1 MacBook Pro. You can see it here. Lower is better here. It takes 23 seconds, and that's actually what it's gonna, you know, that's the score for the M1. If you look at the Intel based, which is just six months younger, um, it's actually gonna be 69 seconds. So 23 seconds seconds versus 69. A huge difference there and a lot faster. All right, so this next one's gonna be Lightroom Classic. Uh, this is another benchmark. It's gonna be exporting 50 complex images. Lower here is better again. And if you look at the left hand, the blue one, the new, M the new M1 MacBook, it's gonna be 178 seconds versus the Intel MacBook, which is 250 seconds. So this one's a little bit tighter, you can see. And the reason for it is it actually, this wasn't optimized at all for the M1 chip, but it's still, it's using the Rosetta kind of, come, you know, the, the system that can convert everything. But still, even with using Using Rosetta, it's still faster by quite a big percentage. So you can see these are just really fast systems. All right, so this new test is gonna be for all the Logic Pro people out there. This is gonna show you how many tracks it can handle. And again, I guess it's all relative. It depends on what the tracks are doing and everything, but this gives you kind of just a good representation of what these systems can do. So the new MacBook, the blue one there, the M1, can do uh, 92 tracks, 92 before it runs into a lot of problems. The older one can only do, or the, the Intel one can only do 13, which is crazy. So you can see the difference there. So on some applications that it's actually optimized for, they're huge, huge differences. And then one more test that's not really, you know, benchmark, but it's going to be battery test. If you look at the uh, MacBook Pro right here, the 13-inch M1, it gets up to 20 hours, and the old one only gets up to about 10 hours, so it's almost double the battery life. And in real world, you know, that's really important to a lot of people, so I just wanted to touch on that. It's great battery on the new M1 chips. All right, so pretty shocking, correct? It's pretty shocking. What I recommend doing, I mean, it's, I, I was saying maybe, you know, if you can get one of the older Intel ones for a really good deal, although right now they're selling the M1s, I'll put up a thing here on Amazon. It may not be for you the same price, you know, when you watch this, but it's a 12, it's already 50 bucks off. I'll put a link in the description if you want to pick one up. Helps the channel, but you can buy them any way you want. Long story short, though, they've already discounted this. So if you can get a really good deal on the older one, it might be worth it. And I used to say kind of wait for these bugs to be worked out. But the differences are so vast now, especially even with even when it runs Rosetta, it's basically going to be faster than, than <laughs> the older ones by far. So it's going to be a tough choice right now to tell people which way to go on this. I would, you know, again, if you don't need it right away, I would wait a couple months, see if any major bugs come out of it. And then, you know, if you can pick up the Intel for a really good price, like in the 800s, maybe go for it. But otherwise, I would pick up the, uh, the M1 MacBook Pro. Again, these are basically both i5 models and 8 gigs of RAM. So it's, it's, they're really very similar. Uh, and those, you know, as far as everything else, except for just the CPUs. Anyways, if you guys can help support my channel and subscribe, it's going to definitely help me out. Um, you know, I make two or three videos a week and, you know, stuff like this all on Apple and, and every other kind of technology out there. So talk to you guys soon and uh, talk to you in about a week. Peace.